documenting the front lines of the AI revolution, the AI Rebels podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the AI Rebels podcast. We're excited. We've got a few important and fun things to talk about today. As you see, it's just Spencer and I today, the co-hosts of the AI Rebels podcast. For those of you just tuning in, you'll see a lot of us, but we like to do this. It's been about every other week uh, where we yeah. kind of dig into some of the recent headlines, news, stories, sometimes funny, sometimes serious, sometimes just crucial and important. And we've kind of got one just of whatever each catches our eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but one thing that caught my eye, maybe because I love bacon, I don't know, but um, they are decode, they're using AI to decode as if it's a code, the pig's grunts. So they can tell you that pig's happy, that pig's about to murder that pig. <laughs> all the That all pig the is cheating on that pig with this other pig. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So <laughs> what they do, I pulled up, let me see if I can just share this real quick. Um, share. Look at this. Do these pigs sound happy or sad? <laughs> European scientists have developed an artificial intelligence algorithm capable of finding out. Their goal is to create a tool that can decode pigs' calls and update farmers on their well being. Researchers say once fully developed, it could also be used to label farms and help consumers make informed choices. Anyway, I just love the uh, label farms too. Like this is a happy pig farm. Don't go to the sad. This pig this farm. is a sad pig farm. If you're if you're looking. Frankly, for sad if it's pork. a happy pig, <laughs> if it's a happy pig farm, they're lying to the pigs because we all know how the story ends. <laughs> so Frank, I'm gonna go with the sad pig farm because it's like at least they're honest. At least they're upfront with the pigs. <laughs> Stuff like this raises some really interesting ethical questions as well, which is like, you know, say we are able to decode it. This is probably not going to happen, but say we're able to decode mm -hmm. pig language to, um, you know, the degree that we can essentially pick out like their, you know, their conversations. Right. Right. Um, what does that mean for like, yeah. Do we keep eating pigs? Like um, how could you, if you can now speak to them? You know, no, like, exactly. And it's like, and then it raises the questions like, okay, you know, in that hypothetical, like, what's different from now, right? Mm -hmm. um, not trying to influence anyone to go vegetarian. Um, I think it's something that everyone should think about, but I'm not vegetarian. I'm not going to get on a, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to get on a soapbox <laughs> about it. But think about it. <laughs> yeah, think about it. Cause I think it's, I don't know. I think it's, in, I think it's important for everybody to like consider, you know, deeply consider how, how that all works. Um, but yeah, it's just yeah. fascinating going back to the AI stuff, you know, getting back on topic. Um, this is something that, that has really excited me about language models in general is, uh, you know, that they're, they're, they're general language models, right? Like they're not just, you know, they're not just modeling the English language, even though most of the training materials are, are in English, right? It's not just the English language. Like they're, they're building a model of language in general. And uh, so you can apply this to animals as well. Um, I've mm -hmm. seen a similar project. Uh, being done for whales. Um, I think that they may have had some initial results. Let me see. I'd be wrong about that, but I know that I know that's in the pipeline. Um, yeah, yeah. I know that it's, I mean, if you think about AI, just as you're pulling that up, this is what it's really good at, right? Pattern recognition. You feed it yeah. data and it'll help recognize patterns and commonalities and these things. So the fact that if we kept watching that video, we'll I can post a link to it when we post this. It's just from Reuters, yeah. but they say how they, you'll see like this huge boom mic and they're like recording <laughs> pigs and they have like thousands and thousands of recordings of pig sounds and they, they like can label it, <clears throat> label it, you know, this is when they're eating, this is when they're playing, this is when they're doing this. And then it starts to say, oh, like it goes up and pitch here, down and pitch here. <clears throat> We invented like the NSA for pigs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's wild it's, though. Yeah, it's 
it's so fascinating. Just there's 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 just so much data and information in the world that mm-hmm. is still invisible to us, um, or you know, obscured essentially, yeah. right? Where it's like we we've, we've got a general idea of uh, you know body language, and when a cat meows like this, it means you know it's probably happy when a cat meows like this, it's probably sad, but also like, we don't really know that. <laughs> right. But yeah. That's all right. just based on, you know, context clues and, and kind of what we assume. Um, and, and we're pretty good at it, but like, there's, there's all of these nuances to uh, the way that other animals communicate that, that are lost on us. And I think it'll be fascinating that to, to start revealing some of those. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm intrigued <laughs> for sure. Um, moving on a little bit, there was recently, well, two things I want to talk about actually real quick. Uh, so first recently there was a superconductor, excuse me, not a superconductor, <laughs> semiconductor <laughs> manufacturing, uh, facility. That'd be amazing. Yeah. If it was a superconductor manufacturing facility, um, that was opened in Arizona, um, that should be starting work on some AI chips. Uh, it, the, the, the first fab is going to start in two, 2027. So, you know, it's a little ways out, but still they have um, <clears throat> run some initial, I, I don't know exactly how this all works. I'm a little bit ignorant to, you know, the internal workings of the semiconductor manufacturing um, industry, but essentially they've done mm-hmm. some test runs and they found that it has 4% more capacity than comparable facilities. And, and, Taiwan, which is extremely, extremely encouraging and exciting because right now, um, pretty much all of our AI capabilities and all of a lot of our computation in general, really, um, is bottlenecked through Taiwan. Like NVIDIA just owns the world <laughs> yeah, of AI yeah, seriously, um, yeah. for good reason. Um, but there's, there's some uh, pain points in relying on Taiwan too heavily. Namely, first, it's like, you know, we don't have our own facilities uh, in, in the U.S. So, in the you know, in the event of a hypothetical war, uh, being too dependent on Taiwan is a little bit totally. scary that way, right? Yeah. Um, and then, second, once again, uh, in the event of a hypothetical war, like let's say that China finally re- like really does go and try to take back Taiwan. Um, even though I personally, we can get into that another time. But anyways, let's <laughs> pretend that Taiwan does really try to take back Taiwan, right? And starts a war. That would obviously, you know, disrupt the the supply Everything. of AI yeah. chips from Taiwan. Uh, so this is really important to not only making the U.S. more um, more stable regarding yeah. regarding our computation supplies, but also the entire world. Uh, <clears> like <throat> we need to diversify our sources of semiconductors and 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 uh, AI chips. Uh, so that's, that's huge. Um, yeah. and hopefully we end up seeing some more of those facilities built as well. Well, I, I think, it, and we'll talk more about this with our next, uh, headline we're going to discuss, but I, I think it also starts to show that, you know, AI is one, not going anywhere Two that it's the government, both state and federal are recognizing the importance and the power and just how crucial it is to be yeah. prepared for any eventuality that could happen. Yeah. And I think that, um, the detractors of AI are, are going to be very disappointed. Um, because increasingly, I mean, like, it's just, it's here guys. <laughs> it's not going yeah. away. Um, yeah, whether you believe that it's capable of reaching human level intelligence or not, it's clearly already quite intelligent. Um, like I would compare it to a very well-read uh, teenager <clears throat> in a lot of ways. Um, very well-read teenager with ADHD. Um, yeah, how yeah. Describe it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's not going anywhere. Uh, so leading into our, our next little segment, that's a perfect segue. Um, the Biden-Harris administration released a memorandum on advancing the United States leadership in our artificial intelligence, harnessing artificial intelligence to fulfill national security objectives and fostering the safety, security, and trustworthiness of artificial intelligence. Um, it's a pretty long memorandum, so we're not going to go through the entire thing, but a couple, we'll just hit a couple key points that, uh, the government, or excuse me, that the White House put out in their fact yeah. sheet. Let me share it, actually. That'd be great. Yeah, that'd be great. <clears throat> 
Yeah, this is huge. All right, so this is huge. Like this is massive. Like um, it can't be overstated. And this how, is how big this is. This is something that I've been hoping for for a couple years now. Um, mm -hmm. Because like people need to know, uh, and that's you know that's one of the president's jobs. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. To, to communicate to the American people. Um, sure. Anyways, so we'll just hit a couple of the key points. So. The NSM directs actions to improve the security and diversity of chip supply chains, just what we were talking about with the manufacturing facility in Arizona. So to me, that sounds like they, they plan to induce or directly invest themselves uh, investments into, you know, further manufacturing facilities. Like I, mm -hmm. it's, it's crucial. <laughs> yeah. um, collection on competitors operations against our AI sec uh, sector, a top tier intelligence priority. This is a really important one. Um, for, for a number of reasons. Uh, but one of them is like already a lot of the AI labs are seeing potential problems with like, you know, like um, espionage, uh, which, you know, it's, it's kind of like some James Bond type stuff, but like it's, yeah. it's real, it's, it's really happening. Um, and so that's, you know, it's critical to, <laughs> to protect that. <Yep. laughs> Can't be given away our secrets. Uh, and then it, it goes through and adds, like, you know, talks about some AI safety stuff. Um, and then it also talks about, uh, and this is, this is something that I really liked. It talks about using AI to cement democratic and liberal ideals, liberal and, you know, not like the specific American political sense, but, you know, in the, the broader, like, uh, political ideology sense. Um, yeah. and I think that that is, that is, that's incredibly important, uh, because the, the worry that I've had with AI is that uh, like so many other technologies that can be used for surveillance, mass surveillance, I'm, I'm pretty opposed to mass surveillance. Um, and I've yeah. been worried about potential uses of AI to conduct mass surveillance. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's, you know, that's the opposite of what I think we should do with AI. Uh, so totally. it's, it's, it's encouraging to see should, the commitment yeah. to, yeah, like we should use it to enhance people's lives. We should use it to uh, enhance the leverage that individual people have in their own lives, et cetera. Yep. Um, totally agree. I mean, I think another, it talks about in here how the U.S. government is going to, in their words, harness cutting edge AI. And I just, I think the next, I mean, we'll see with this coming election what happens, but hopefully the next year, there's a huge investment by the government to just that harness AI and actually implement it into their various agencies. I could see a lot of the employees being resistant because frankly, I think a lot of government work can be automated, but we can talk about that another time. Um, <laughs> but I think it's crucial and will decrease overall spending and help reduce the debt it could help in so many ways yeah and i think it's just also like it's important from a national security perspective too where china is developing ai systems as well and you can sure as hell bet that they are integrating it into weaponry um yeah oh and i'm not gonna yeah. sit here like i i'm not one who actually like you know i'm not gonna sit here and scaremonger about china too much because i personally I'm of the opinion that it's it's rather unlikely for us to see like a major war between the United States and China, at least in the immediate future. I could be wrong. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to bet money on that. Um, but <laughs> yeah. I just don't feel like it's going to scaremonger too much. But, you know, the reality is that there are adversarial actors out there and they are going to try and take advantage of this as well. Like, even if we totally. look to like non-state actors, like I am positive that there are uh, terrorists and hacker groups out there who are looking for yeah. new ways to apply this AI in, in service of their goals. Um, 100%. Yep. So it's like we need uh, to, to use everybody's, not everybody's, but a lot of people's most hated phrase, like, <laughs> we do need a good guy with a gun. <laughs> yeah. In yeah. this case, like, we, we do. <laughs> and it, I, I mean, it's fascinating how quickly they're trying to implement different programs. Like I saw, I didn't see it in the fact sheet. So maybe it was in the full memo, um, unless you see it, but they, they 
talk about about how they're basically going to prioritize um, individuals trying to get visas, whatever it is, that yeah. have AI expertise, which is kind of thrown out in the memo. They just like mention it, like, "Hey, we're going to do this." Yeah, but it's that actually weird that I'm not seeing huge. it. In the, yeah, because I feel like that's a big deal. Where no, they're I saying was one of the we will prioritize this. this. And that's, that's something that stood out to me as well of like uh, doubling down on, you know, committing to bringing in more tech workers and, and just more, you know, more smart people in general, um, yep. which, which I love because I think that's always been like the United States greatest competitive yeah. advantage. It's like, ah, we don't care. Like come 100%. over here, like do some work for us, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> make just, some money. Like <laughs> we don't care where you're from. Yeah. Just if you want to do some good work and have the financial backing to do it, come it's the place to come. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and you know, the, that's, that's one of the things that I feel very proud about being American. Uh, mm. There's some things I'm not proud it's, about, it's, but that's one of the things <laughs> no, exactly. that I'm very, like, very proud yeah, of. Like, like if I had to define my, my, my patriotism, mm. it is entirely that like, I think that the people who live in America and the people who come to live in America are generally very cool people. And mm -hmm. yeah, Awesome. That you know, I think it's 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 important that we double down on that for AI purposes, especially because it's like this is more than ever. Knowledge work is so distributed across the world. It used to be, you know, it's like knowledge work would primarily happen in you know certain academies, certain universities, etc. Right? <clears throat> yeah. Um, certain city centers, even. Uh, but now it's like you're getting contributions, significant contributions to AI from, you know, people living in like random villages in India. <laughs> yeah. There's, yeah. there's, there's a dude that I know on, on Twitter who I don't remember where he's from in India, but if I remember right, it's relatively rural, but now he's going to, you know, you know, uh, Syracuse university. Um, wow. If I remember right, I, I believe that he is pursuing a PhD in machine learning. I, I could be wrong. I could be misremembering, but anyways, point being, um, let's take advantage of all of this. <laughs> like, let's, let's yeah. give up people opportunities and, you know, totally. they're going to increase our advantage. Um, and I think that that's going to be critical to uh, winning the AI race. Yep. Yeah. We need, oh, we need to attract the best and brightest. huge. And that's what, that's our competitive advantage here, right? Like we can <clears throat> pull from all, every country in the world. And yeah, exactly. We, like to a degree that do. nobody else really can. Yeah. So if I had to, and you can feel free to add on, if I had to summarize this national security memo, first, let me stress again, how huge this is. This is from the president and vice president of the United States. And if I had to summarize what it is, it's saying AI is crucial. It's not going anywhere. We're going to apply it to the US government. We're going to implement AI tools. We're going to bring as many AI experts to America as we can, and we're going to try to onshore chip production. Did I yeah. miss anything big that comes to mind? No, I think that's it. Um, and on that note, like we were discussing this before we started recording, um, but AI haters, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> AI is here to Bummer. say like, like the the White House doesn't release a, a memo like this, you know, that goes out to let me let me see. Memorandum for the Vice President, Secretary of State, Secretary of the Treasury, Secretary of Defense, Attorney General, Secretary of everybody. Like, like you big, go through it's, like, it's every it's F, it's every bureau <laughs> in mm -hmm. the government. Um they they don't write these memos lightly. Um Obviously, there's still a lot that's unsettled with regards to AI. You know, who knows where the the, the cap might be? Uh, as this memo notes, so far it doesn't look like the cap it were anywhere close to the intelligence mm -hmm. cap uh, cap for even for transformer models, which a lot of people are um, pessimistic about long term. Um, even AI as experts, uh, but like it's it's real, guys. Like you, oh, I I get get so frustrated and so sad um, seeing the way that people talk about AI online because I'm like, you guys don't know what's coming. You guys are, mm. you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Wake up, smell the roses. <laughs> like you <laughs> still, still, pe still see people talking about it as if like, 
you know, it's like, oh, like it's useless. Like, no, it's not guys. I'm yeah. sorry. Like, well, I know you want it to be. Yeah. It's like, what, there's like that, that conversation, like it's useless, but then there are those, what comes to mind are like the actors and singers who are like, don't let AI into this artistic field. And I'm like, yeah, don't let AI. Okay. You are the question sh that like, you shouldn't be pushing to not let AI in because that's absurd and ignorant. What you should be pushing for is let's implement regulations to make sure it's applied appropriately because it's going to be no, it's exactly. not going anywhere. You hey, can't, call back you to can't memo. the memo talks about that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, and, everyone and, get your mind straight here. And I think that, I think that we'll see some artists start to kind of change their mind when they start to realize that, uh, a lot of the technology that allows them to make, you know, cool music is fundamentally at its core, not that different from AI, right? Yeah. Um, auto tune, you, auto tune, you can't call it AI, right? But it's, it's built on a lot of, a lot of the similar principles of like interpolation, right? Um, yep. LLMs just take the interpolation to a whole nother level. Uh, mm -hmm. but, but really like it's, not that different from previous yeah. technologies. You just it's can just... do it more and better. <laughs> it's... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and and I, I do, I do kind of empathize with like you know the artists and and uh, musicians, actors, etc. Right? Like like I think that there are some very uh, negative examples of AI usage. Like I'm sure that a lot of these actors, like their touch point is like the weird CGI, deep fake recreations of dead mm -hmm. actors. Um, that, that just creep everybody out, you know? <laughs> right. Right. Um, and, uh, and so it's like, I, I, I empathize with where they're coming from, but I, I, I very strongly believe that first they're wrong <laughs> yeah, in how right. they're approaching the issue. And second, I very firmly believe that a lot of them would feel differently if they were exposed to the technology more and understood it better. Um, mm -hmm. And once again, uh, I think that I mentioned this on the on the show before, but I do think that AI companies should try and make like good faith experts, uh, excuse me, good faith efforts to pay, you know, major artists whose work they use in training. Um, it's it's unrealistic to expect it to happen to like a, a super high degree of granularity, just because it's like yeah. training sets are so huge. Um, but I do think it would go a really long way, totally, um, if they if they made a good faith effort. Um, yeah. Yeah. That seems crazy right. time out here. Crazy, but exciting. And it's here to stay. Yeah. So let's figure out how to make it work with everything and yeah. growing pains, yeah. right? Like it's going to be painful and, and we're not trying to not empathize or say, get over it. It's not a big deal. It's a huge deal and everything is going to change and it's going to be hard and there's going to be pain, but it's going to happen. So the faster you can adapt and cope, the faster you'll be able to benefit from it rather than just be hurt. From yeah. It. I mean, like that's, that's, that's what this podcast is for. You know, it's like this, this revolution is coming. Um, major changes. Yep. Get ready. <laughs> Here we go. I think that's everything I had Spence yet. Did you have anything else? No, that covers it. Uh, another great episode in my opinion. Yeah. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We've got a couple really awesome guests in the pipeline that we've interviewed and getting the episodes all cleaned up. So don't yeah. miss the next week's. So you won't want to miss them. So give us a follow no. and you'll hear from us soon. <laughs>